So, yeah, so I guess I'll give a short introduction about myself, but my name is Matt. Been here at Avalabs for about two years now. Originally joined to be focused primarily on DeFi and then kind of transitioned also helping quite a bit with institutional and capital markets. But over the past year, I've been more of a generalist in nature. And so I lead a lot of uh, discussions with teams within infrastructure, data, security, and tooling as well. But being that meme coins are kind of DeFi focused, I thought it would be fun for me to be in this Twitter spaces. But I guess um, we'll start off with Cock and then go from there, kind of down the list. Cock, Tech, No Chill, Kimbo, and Gecko, and uh, introductions. But maybe regarding introductions, we keep going like who you are, uh, how the idea arrived for the meme coin, how the founding team is formed, and then maybe like explaining a quick uh, what was funny about your meme coin or special or something like that. But I'll turn it over to the representative from the Cocky New team. Hey, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, so this is Gribbly. Um, obviously, uh, who am I? So I've, I've, I guess I joined crypto back in 2015. Started my journey back then with like Bitcoin, ETH, all the BTC, LTC clones, mining, running mining pools, all of that good stuff. Found my way to Avalanche in September 21. Never left. So played DeFi. You know, found my way through the own forks, time, maxi, and others. And I'm, I'm not going to say their names. So I don't want to cause too much PTSD in the room. Um, and then found my way into chicken. And chicken, for those who don't know, great you know NFT project on on the chain. Became my home with um, you know great blend of NFTs, DeFi, GameFi, and most importantly the community. So. Really, the community at Chicken has been phenomenal. And, you know, the, the great community in Avalanche is, is also amazing. Um, but that's really where Cock in You was born. Um, I first kind of conceived the idea back in January of 23, when we had, like, the Baba Inu and, and other coins trying to launch and, you know, sort of joked around a bit, let it go. Then when we were at the Avalanche Summit in May last year in Barcelona, I brought it up at the uh, the Chicken and Mad Skulls party and was chatting to Wojak in person and, and others. And obviously the the joke started to fly, you know, obviously the memetics around cocking you. It can be as harmless as you want, being a rooster and a dog, or it can be as vulgar as you, you wish. Now we try not to cross that line too much, but obviously there's some jokes there and, and so on. But importantly, there's a great core of community and and I guess the memetics from, you know, we already have a, an NFT effectively in Chicken and Rooster. So did nothing with it then, but then the time was right in December. So I got, a, I got I literally got a call from Wojak saying, hey, can we launch it today? This is like on December 5th. I'm like, I don't know if I can do it today, but let's, uh, let's have a call in the morning. Let's chat about it. And sure enough, wrote the contract up on on the 6th, launched on the 7th, and kind of the rest is a, is a bit of history. But I think, you know, there's some natural memetics and comedy around the name of the token alone. And, you know, we've seen a phenomenal response from community, both, you know, inside Chicken, outside of Chicken in the in the larger AVAX community, and, and even beyond there into to other chains. So it's been a fun ride so far. Amazing. <laughs> I think it's funny that you said, allow the chicken to sort of fly. But uh, yeah, I remember when you guys launched back in December, and it seemed like out of nowhere, immediately the, the coin went to like 15 mil FDV, and everyone was talking about it in like a matter of a day or two. But it's really great to have you here. I guess I'll uh, turn it over to Excel and the tech team. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks for having me here. I'm a uh... I'm flipping through the audience here and you think you know so many people in crypto, but there's just so many more people out there. So um, a little bit about myself. I, uh, I'm XL, XL Baller is my tag, but I'm speaking from the tech account. Um, I've been in crypto since 2019, kind of started my path like most people on Ethereum and Bitcoin, just stacking sats. And then 2021, I heard about Avalanche and I bridged over. Um, I was also doing some shitcoining on, uh, on Binance as well, but bridged over to Avalanche, made some friends, and then realized how awesome the tech was. And uh, I've stuck through the entire last bull market, the entire bear market, and then to where we he are here now. And, and the whole meme about 
uh, number go up tech that is that is born from the bear market like in the depths of the bear market everybody's poor nobody's making money you're getting chopped trying to trade you're trying to chase the yield where you can in DeFi. so like that's the whole joke right like everybody's has to be in it for the tech if you want to be here and so that that's kind of what tech is all about um it was perfect to launch on avalanche because everybody here is in it for the tech like you look at other chains and you can kind of see a little bit more maturity here. I think the people here are a little bit more logical in their thinking. I've, I've noticed that all of the teams that are up here on stage and even the guys that I know that, that aren't yet, um, they have all, they're all trying to build something. And it's just been a really cool synergy to have between the different teams trying to grow their brand and, and grow the pie over here at Avalanche. <laughs> I still remember... Uh summit this past year and hanging out at the Trader Joe pool party. It was uh, so fun. And me, you, Morgan, and a group of other people just, you know, getting back, getting after it. Yeah, shout out Trader Joe for their awesome parties and uh, and the pool water. So if you guys decided to do another pool party, make sure you get the pool water. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, No Show, you're up next. Awesome. So I guess I'll start and then uh, I'll hand it off to Chopper and then we'll introduce our project after that. So uh, my name is, my pseudonym is Pythonomics. Uh, I've been in crypto since 2013. Uh, I actually got in to, I bought my first Bitcoin in the in the crash, the Mt. Gox crash, uh, when it went from 266 to 50. Um, so I've, I, I've seen a lot of stuff in this, in this sphere. Um, always kind of experimenting and, and floating around the ecosystem, trying to find, uh, trying to f find where home is. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done a lot of research on, uh, you know, the infrastructure, the utilities, and just kind of the various services out there. And that's where, uh, I, I, that's how I kind of ended up on Avalanche. Uh, actually, um, I didn't, I didn't enter the Avalanche ecosystem until the social five platform, uh, stars arena, uh, popped up. And uh, that's actually where I met Chopper uh, and uh, the other team member who's not on stage with us, Willy Wapka. Uh, Chopper, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Um, so my name is Chopper. Um, I started in crypto in 2020, and I didn't join crypto Twitter till 2023, actually. So I haven't been in the, in the Twitter sphere uh, for, for that long. Um, kind of like Pythonomic said, um, this team was formed. Um, in Stars Arena, or now called the Arena, um, we all met ourselves there. Um, that was kind of my not my introduction to Avalanche, but really kind of my, my deeper dive into the Avalanche ecosystem. Um, the meme took place and, and kind of started to formulate in November of 2023 when Jason and Philip took over um, took over the Arena from the old team. Um, the the initial meme was actually kind of a play on the old ownership, um, which was Chill Pill. Um, and that's kind of what we launched. So we launched in mid-December. Um, it was kind of the perfect time for us to launch because the arena had introduced the badge system. And so there was, you know, kind of a really nice entry point for us where there's a badge associated with a user, which is also associated with a wallet. Um, so we were kind of the first, the first SocialFi airdrop um, and we pivoted the meme after launch to kind of, I guess, make, make more sense to a wider audience and, and be more di digestible. Um, and it's been a, it's been a really fun ride since then. Awesome. Yeah. I guess being that you guys are relatively new to the ecosystem compared to some of these OGs, how has your time been, uh, within the ecosystem and, and avalanche in general? We feel, at least myself, uh, I've gotten three years of PTSD in a matter of a couple months, um, and that's that, that's mostly because of like the the original kind of the Stars Arena fiasco, right? I mean, at the very bottom of the bear market, Stars Arena comes out, becomes this hot new thing, and then all of a sudden it gets hacked, and you know, all you know, any money we've put in is gone. So it was, it was uh, it, it's been a, a roller coaster of a ride. But putting that aside. Um, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been an interesting space. Uh, it's that there's a lot of friendly faces. There's a lot of, uh, more mature, more, um, kind of experienced faces, uh, in, in this ecosystem. So, you know, that's, it's a very, uh, very nice and welcoming thing to see. I mean, there's still, 
you know, various scammers running rampant on the chain, but every chain's got that, right? Um, it just, uh, here, you, you know who it is over here. You don't know it on other chains. So, um, it, it was a very kind of refreshing type of, uh, d- type of experience for us, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I remember that crazy couple week long period. I was actually in Barcelona for SmartCon and out of nowhere, Stars Arena, like, so Nadim and myself, we met with the, the original founders from Stars Arena a couple weeks before that. And uh, we were like, all right, a Fentech fork. Fentech did very well this summer. Like, and it wasn't a direct fork. They added some, like, kind of new and novel code. Um, and it was about two weeks with a lull in between that first meeting in which the platform was live in a mainnet environment. And then, well, we were all kind of in Barcelona for SmartCon for whatever reason. It just absolutely started popping off with Wall Street Bets chairman, Calio, et cetera, all joining. And then, of course, unfortunately, like you know, um, during that time period, it got exploited. And then I think a lot of people had to quickly kind of patch um, and hand over to the new team, which ended up, I think, being a blessing in disguise because I think you guys came back stronger than ever in terms of the arena and Phil up. He's kind of an avalanche OG and Jason and everyone. So, um, yeah, I think honestly it turned out not too bad. Um, but unfortunately some people went through some pain. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, from a team perspective, we, we kind of look at ourselves as, as a little bit of a, a, an arena redemption story. I think based on the fact that we, we airdropped to people that had stuck through it, um, through kind of the hard times and the pain, and uh, that's kind of where our core community was formed. And, you know, I think we're lucky to have them. Exactly. Yeah, so I guess uh, handing it over to the Kimbo team, you mind giving your introduction as well? Yeah. Hey, guys, uh, this is Ty. My name is Ty. Um, Ty Ross Tunes. I'm a Kimbo team member. I'm relatively new to the idea of, you know, community within crypto i joined i mean i guess i bought bitcoin in 2017 i think at its peak um and then in obviously the last bull run i was pretty big into dogecoin because i really do like dogs which is why i have a affinity towards kimbo um i wasn't on the original team who who launched it so um as far as like the reasoning for them launching the, the token i think you know with cock that that was obviously a hilarious meme that's really what brought me into the community side of things um i saw took put out a tweet and that's kind of how i how i got involved into kimbo and ever since that day obviously i've been getting more and more involved and that's why i'm here on stage with you guys um but yeah so uh during the during the bear market i was just really buying into avax and solana i didn't know too much about about, about avax but I knew about subnets. I didn't really know how they worked. Um, with meme coins, they, they really do draw people in. Uh, this is really the best way to get involved with people on Twitter. Like, if you would have said me three months ago, I I didn't actually know that people were having huge communities with PFPs and everything and just assimilating with just a, either a meme coin or an NFT. So this is still somewhat new to me, and I'm and I really dove pretty deep into it now that I'm uh, a part of the Kimbo community and it's just good to be here. Nice. Yeah. I think Kimbo is also the name of Luigi's like family dog that he grew up with. And so it's always funny joking about uh, Kimbo internally. Cause I think his dog is like 14 or 15 years old. So super old. And so I think that's kind of where the meme was birthed if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. My mom has a Yorkshire Terrier, and I think he's 12, so that's another reason I really got into it. I was like, oh, it's, it's just like Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, yeah, I guess turning it over to our final guest, um, a member of the Gecko Inu team, do you mind kind of introducing yourself? Yeah, hey guys. Uh, again, thank you so much for having us. Uh, my name is Jaden, and I'm the community manager at Gecko Inu. Uh, I guess my story is similar to Thai in a way that I was not originally the, you know, the core team member. 
um, you know, when they started out the project, they reached out to me because uh, I knew some of the guys there uh, in real life. So, uh, yeah, I've been supporting the projects ever since. Uh, as to my experience in crypto, I would say I am not as diverse as these guys. I joined pretty late. Uh, late 2021, the last bull run was uh, the attraction for me to get into it. I uh, bought it at the top and uh, rode it all the way down, lost everything. But uh, it was fun regardless. And uh, uh, I was involved in the you know, BNB chain, EVM, Ethereum ecosystem, uh, and just a little bit on AVAX, not too much because uh, I didn't feel the need to. But then uh, early, no, late, late, I think late 2023, 20, early December, the team invited me to AVAX, started learning the chain. And uh, I have to say, listen, memes are really the way to onboard people to a new ecosystem because of, you know, working with the Gecko Union team, I, I am now very, very much uh, involved with Avalanche. So that was amazing. Um, as to, you know, I think you also asked about, you know, what we're doing and uh, our inspiration. Uh, very simple. I mean, I, we, we love the, the movie with Rango, Johnny Depp, right? And uh, so our, our lizard, our gecko is probably uh, took after that inspiration, that movie being uh, the, uh, the sheriff in the town, I guess. And, uh, you, you know, when we launched, we always have this vision that we want to build something different. Uh, into the meme coin ecosystem because back then, you know, Solana memes and AVAX memes, you guys were, uh, you know, crazy, right? But not a lot of, I would say, utility memes. So uh, initially, we, we wanted to do that. Uh, we always plan out to have, you know, um, launch pads, swaps, and NFTs, and even like games. Uh, so we're doing this pretty, pretty, pretty thoroughly, pretty hard. But, uh, and, and finally, it pays off, you know, Av Av Avalanche. Um, invested in us so that was an honor so again just uh very happy to be here in this space right now yeah happy to have you as well so i guess we'll turn it over to kind of more roundtable discussion and because we have so many guests up here speaking maybe we um have each guest raise their hand and then um speak right after that but i guess our first question is why did you decide to launch your token on Avalanche. And this kind of goes back to the introduction as well about how you found Avalanche. And so based on launching your token here, do you regret it? Do you wish you're on another chain or has it been a phenomenal success? <laughs> um, so everyone's raising their hand at once. I guess I'll, I'll just call on number go up tech just cause cock had the first intro. Sure. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Avalanche would be the only place for us to launch a token like tech um, because, you know, it's kind of a double entendre, right? It's it's the whole meme about we're in it for the tech. Everything's down bad in the bear market. But then in all actuality, everybody on Avalanche kind of is in it for the tech. Um, our, all of the building and infrastructure and everything that was built out during the, uh, during the bear market uh, by the Avalabs team and kudos to them is, is finally coming to fruition. And so uh, launched the coin with myself and with Spaced.avax. He's an OG. He's been a software engineer for like 20 years. Um, our team's still small. We're, you know, we've, we've covered a lot of ground in a short period of time, but uh, it's our intention, you know, to be, to keep up with the humor, keep up with the memes and all of that, like we always do, but then get serious about actually building something out. And so Avalanche was an obvious choice for both of us. I don't think we, we would want to launch it with another community or do it on another chain. Amazing. Maybe I'll turn it over to the Kimbo team as well for this one. Yeah, so being that neither Ruben nor myself were actually a part of the original team who had the conception of the idea for Kimbo, um, I, I know that I had spoken with Took, Barkley, and Scoob, who are... Um, involved still with uh, with us. Um, obviously, Cock was huge at, at the time, and they had saw a bunch of people kind of cycling their wins into various rugs. So they wanted to create a safe way for people to, you know, play play the meme coin game. At the time, um, at this point, I wasn't you know very hugely involved in the in the crypto Twitter space. So I just saw. A dog that I liked and it really just does represent the dog lovers um, Kimbo like as far as the community goes it's just a very wholesome group of people some of the best people I've ever met uh, I know Ruben didn't really get to speak at the beginning but he's one of the nicest people I've ever met and it's a pleasure to meet him but I never really thought that I would be talking to like people from Spain France uh, 
Turkey, Colorado, or Australia on like a regular basis. So it kind of just unites the, just the group of people who have a have a love for dogs and just really like crypto as well. Yeah, I mean, I was listening to XL Baller on a, a space yesterday talking about it's really just crazy how much it unites the community. And there are so many new faces who um, I've never seen within the Avalanche community just coming and being kind of a strong cornerstone uh, now within the space. And I think personally, sometimes NFTs, especially ones that are relatively limited supply in nature, can be too expensive for individuals. And so the barrier of entry is a little higher. But in terms of being a cock millionaire, a Kimbo millionaire, etc., it's relatively easy. And then you feel connected to that community. It might be a cute dog. It might be a chicken. It might be number go up technology, but it really is just kind of a unifying factor. Um, yeah, I guess no chill next. And then cock, you can kind of carry up the end of this question. All right. Uh, he, I mean, really had his hand up before, so I'm, I'm happy to go after him if, if he wants to go first, but if not, Gribbly, um, Gribbly it's up to you. I'll let you choose. No, 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 no you, you, you go, man. You go. All right, thank you. Um, so the the reason we chose Avalanche was um, primarily uh, because that's where we we kind of met each other. Like you know, Chopper, Wonka, and myself we met in we met in the arena, which is on Avalanche. So uh, we said, you know, what would be the most streamlined way to to get an airdrop to to our audience to to the audience that's that we want to target this towards? And um, Avalanche Avalanche was the answer to that. Um, it just so happened that because we, we chose Avalanche, we were able to build out some really cool tools that vertically integrated with the arena at the same time and just bring a lot of, uh, added value, not only to the platform, but also to the users. So it, it was, it was kind of like we, 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 when I saw Avalanche, you know, there's a lot of cool, uh, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff built on top of it, but there's always room for more versus other chains, which uh, have quite a bit of uh, have quite a bit of stuff built on there, and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh, room for new stuff over there. So, um, really, I, I saw it as kind of a, a fresh canvas. Yeah, I, th I think um, a lot of people, especially when they come to Avalanche, feel like we're a very open community and kind of giving and willing to listen. Um, it's funny how many DMs I get just asking about, hey, what's your thoughts about XYZ? And I try and kind of always be open and give my opinion. Um, but yeah, I guess the COC team, you want to um, kind of round out this discussion. And then if there's any final thoughts before moving on to the next question, feel free, anyone, to just hop up. Yeah, I mean, I think I covered most of it anyway. But yeah, the reality for us is chicken was here. That's where we came from. But forgetting that, the reason I hung around is Avalanche has a phenomenal community. Um, the the tech is good, uh, as we well know. But you know, reality, you know, two second blocks, instant finality, phenomenal stability, great innovation, things like the horizontal scaling with you know subnets coming. Um, you know, I know they're here, but I mean, expanding out and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing all of that and all of that put together. I mean, when you add in things like phenomenal people, you know, we've got you know, the likes of Trader Joe who are great at supporting us during our launch, um, as well as the accessibility of yourselves at, at Ava Labs. I mean, I don't believe if I was on ETH. I'd have a chance of speaking to anybody from you know the core team. Same in Solana, same in other places. Avalanche just is more welcoming, and I think it embraces its developer community phenomenally. And and that really, to me, makes it the perfect place. Forget the memetics, forget the meme. I'm just talking about the location. It's it's perfect because you know I've got, I've got a real soft spot in my heart for for Avalanche. I'll just put it out there. Thank you. I mean that means a lot. Um, Gecko, you know, team, I know you didn't kind of speak yeah. this discussion yet and you had your hand up, so I, I can give it to you next. Yeah, thank you. Uh, no, I agree with uh, the guys 100%. I mean, the environment is much more welcoming. Um, I, I've worked previously with different teams um, and, you know, they're very not responsive. The community is not that strong. And so in the community side, you guys uh, hit the nail on that one. Um, I just want to add one more thing, though. 
because uh, initially why we, we, we launched on AVAX was, you know, we, before we launch anything, we sort of look at the market, right? And we evaluate everything. And this is 100% honest. We, we look at also Solana, the competitor, and we were seeing Solana was leading, but then there was like a decline in meme coin interest at the time. Uh, so it's either going to be Solana or AVAX, right? We're not going to go to BNB chain, which is not very well known for memes, and Ethereum is just too much. Um, and so, you know, and, and plus one, one other thing is that, you know, at that time, a Avalanche meme coins were just so buzzing, and especially with Kakinu too. Uh, so that was amazing. It motivated us to build on uh, AVAX. Uh, along with that, you know, the, the design of AVAX is sort of like perfect for what we're trying to do. I mean, the C chain, the subnets, uh, our vision for Gecko Inu was never to lost sort of like um, limit ourselves within the AVAX ecosystem alone. We, we really want to reach out to other communities, you know, EVM being the first, uh, you know, the, the first one in mind. So we really want to spread awareness and attention to, get to Gecko. And so like in return, we get attention back to the Avalanche ecosystem. So, you know, uh, AVAX has the C chain EVM compatible was a perfect choice. Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of the builders, we, we've worked with, uh, you know, we reach out to a lot of uh, communities on Avalanche. Everyone seems to be very welcoming, even though, you know, we are a pretty new team in AVAX. So just want to add that in. Awesome. Yeah, so I guess segueing to the next set of questions, um, and this one's kind of unique to each meme coin or culture coin, just because I do think you guys have different communities, but um, I guess, what role does the community play in growing meme coin, supporting a token, that sort of thing? Um, like I mentioned, Excel Baller kind of hit the nail on the head in a space I was listening to yesterday in which he said barrier of entry might be lower compared to NFTs. But at the end of the day, it's all about community, growing Discord channels, telegrams, having fun, having having fun, sorry, having good discussion and just joking around and being goofy. So I guess, um, how do you feel like you've grown your community? Uh, what did your community rally around that sort of thing? And we'll start off... Um, with the Gecko Inu team here, we'll kind of go in reverse and then go from there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, I guess we we all we owe our success to the community a hundred percent. I mean, we wouldn't be here without you know the supporting community uh, like the Gecko Chats. Yeah. So if you're listening, thank you so much for the support. Um, and I uh, and you know this thing, I, I think their support was shown through various occasions, like uh, every competitions that we have. You know, every rates that we have as well uh and uh the community is is really strong last uh, i think a couple of months back we had a competition with godbit uh where you know we were the uh one out of the only two avax meme coins out of 16 contenders in that competition and then you know we made it to the quarterfinals it was all because of you guys so uh thank you uh and uh, one unique thing about our community, I would say, is the fact that we are pretty global. Um, so maybe not that unique, but just want me to mention that. Unlike some projects that focus on specific regions like Chinese or English or non-English speaking countries, our community is, is international. Uh, you know, we have members from diverse backgrounds and locations. We also set up different communication channels for them and we hired like targeted moderators to cater to their needs um and yeah we uh i guess and the community uh, also you know not only from you know different places in the world but they're also from different blockchains as well because again we part up with different uh blockchains like you know zk Singh, uh bnb ethereum and even some solana projects that we've got uh from the godby competition so um that was that was pretty amazing to see um the community so diverse and growing every day Nice. And do you feel like your community is like geographically centered anywhere, or relatively diverse, or what do you think? Yes. Um, okay. So uh, we have uh, people here and there. Uh, I think mainly we have Southeast Asian people a lot. Uh, I notice in our uh, Indonesian, Philippines, and Vietnamese chat, they're pretty active. Uh, also in Indian chat. Uh, but yeah, we also have people in uh, and, and Turkey as well. Very active people there. Um, and yeah, we also have people with French uh, and, and different places in the world, but they are not as prominent. Got it. Yeah, I guess turning this question over to the cock team um, might be good to mention kind of your chicken upbringing, what chicken is, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, 
To me, I think community is the single most important aspect of, of a meme coin. I mean, I'd, I'd rather say a community coin. You know, our community has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the last three and a half months have been a pleasure. Uh, we've seen people pick up and run with um, all sorts of things, you know, from, from merchandising, you know, various people building clothing. Uh, we've got a uh, cocky new coffee and there's some more adventurous endeavors that, yeah, we, we see coming along over time. You know, we've got phenomenal people. You know, I'm, I'm, I can't shout out everyone, but I do want to shout out Clint slash the botcast, Wex for turning up every single day for Twitter spaces. We've had NFT projects we've uh, launched around us and so much more. Um, you know, we definitely got a core in chicken. Um, so for those that don't know, Chicken is an NFT project that um, it's been around a couple of years uh, on Avalanche, built through the bear, uh, the most stubborn bunch of diamond-handed individuals you will ever meet. Um, love them all. And, you know, the, it's it's really, obviously it's NFTs, but it brings in aspects of decentralized finance. It brings in aspects of GameFi. So that there's a whole host of things there. It's being built out. Um, and they've continued to build through through the bear market, and that's really where we came from. Um, but it's been incredible to watch it expand from that. You know, we started with obviously the, the chicken guys. You know, the chicken community were big supporters in in the first you know, minutes of our launch, but it very quickly spun outside of that to cover people from all aspects of you know the avalanche ecosystem. And it's been great to see people coming together where there may have been rivalries. Prior, um, I'm just suggesting that there were definitely cliques and you know things like that going on, and and it seemed to unify a lot of people, bring people together, and then and then we saw it expand even beyond that, and we've seen people coming into the spaces from Solana and from other chains who really they're just saying, hey, you know, I saw the name, it was hilarious, I had to come, I had to join. Um, but as to your your comments about you know, building, you know we've we've got the community building out on on Twitter or X, Telegram, Discord. We've run initiatives to try to encourage growing of that. So things like the hackathon that we ran back at the beginning of the year, uh, where we encourage not only developer based submissions but things that encouraged or built community. We we understood that community was a big part of it. We just we didn't want people to feel left out when it came to that hackathon. We've run art and meme competitions. Uh, well, Jack ran a treasure hunt over the weekend of St. Patrick's Day in New York City. Um, and, you know, we intend to do so much more of this. You know, we've got some things coming up. We've got NFT NYC. Stay tuned for that. There's going to be some news and some things coming on that. Uh, we have a Cockfest being run by a very own One Third Nerd, big, um, you know, community member, being in lots of spaces, part chicken, mad skulls, and so on. That's going to be up in Troy, New York on 420. Um, for reference, our contract starts 0x420. So it's, you know, it's playing on that, that meme. Um, when you start talking about the community and where they are, they're everywhere. And we've obviously got strong numbers in uh, North America, Western Europe. But we also have strong contingents in Turkey, Africa, Asia Pacific, obviously down under and, and South America. It's, as, as mentioned before, it's phenomenal to see people from all of these different geographies coming together for the love of cock. And, you know, without... Yeah, joking about it, but the reality is it's the memetics, it's funny, and you know, I just want to say thank you to our many tens of thousands of holders and, and we just want to keep building with you and, and enjoying the vibe. Nice, nice. Um I guess turning it over to Excel and uh, the community at Number Go Up Technology. Um I've been kind of an early community member, so it's been fun to see that community grow as well. But what do you feel like your community uh, specifically like what do they revolve around uh, how did they come about yeah i think um like you said early on the community is everything but just to uh just to kind of expand on that like our community so you know we pretty much know most of the people that are coming in and joining and jump, jumping in the telegram because we've been here um it's a mix right like we've got <laughs> we've got 4chan humor in the memes right but then on the other side, like we roll out an Enclave listing with those guys. And then we've got community members writing threads on Enclave. 
and you know why a fully encrypted exchange is so much better than these other options and how it's only native to Avalanche and we're having discussions about Hyper SDK. So I feel like we cover a pretty broad spectrum within that uh, meme. And I want to give a shout out definitely to, to Kyle. Kyle, they have, they've just gone so viral with their marketing. Their community has jumped all over it. Uh, they've jumped all over the cock and they've pretty much gone like worldwide, right? Like you have them in every different part of the world. I mean, you just saw what happened in Manhattan with the treasure hunt. These types of communities, they can't be bought. These are extremely autistic people. <laughs> They're extremely loyal people. And so, you know, we are starting, you know, in the short time that we've been around, we are starting to see some of these people come in that really have an interest in technology and pushing it forward and having discussions about launching subnets. We also have people that want to come in and just shit posts and spam stickers and the telegram, right? Like the whole idea about, you know, green balls, that wasn't me. Get in the van, that wasn't me. That was a community member that did it. And then everyone just thought it was hilarious. So we're like, hey, this is what the community wants. Uh, we're going to run with it. So, you know, what, what I'm seeing with meme coins in general, though, people, you have these coins in your wallet. I was talking to Landslide about this last night on Spaces. We, you have these coins in your wallet. It kind of becomes your identity in a way. You can look in someone's wallet and say, oh, this is what this person's about, or this is what this person's about. So um, it's not always just about the financial return. Like, yeah, you can make money on them, but it's, you know, also about, are you interested in what this group of folks is about? And so um, as our community is continuing, continuing to grow, we're getting people from, you know, all different sides of the spectrum. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, it was funny seeing Messi just absolutely cook early in that Telegram channel with all the raids and just funny stuff going on. It was one of those things where I'd be up at midnight just cracking up on my phone just seeing the chaos in the Telegram chat. Um, but yeah, I guess, no chill. Um, you mind kind of diving into this question as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think we had we had a, a unique benefit um, when it came to launching our token because we airdropped to a core group of people that were known. Um, and I think that was a pretty unique experience for us um, where, you know, even after the initial run up after launch and the, you know, one or two month kind of meme coin bear market that preceded that it was that core group of people that we airdropped to believed in this project so much that the telegram channel was never dry. It always was running. Um, you know, I think what you look for in a project when you're launching it is like a core group of followers that believe in the project and will never sell. And I think about the halfway point through the kind of after launch bear market, the team looked at each other and said, I think we found that group. We, we found that group of people that believe in this project so much, they're not going to let it fail. And the price discovery that kind of happened after that point, um, it honestly wasn't a surprise to people in the channel. Um, and I think that was a really kind of unique thing for us as a team to have that core group of people that we had kind of gone through so much trauma in the, in the stars arena kind of saga together was seeing this token kind of as a redemption story for us. Right. And then airdropping those people that we knew from, from that time spent together also was special. Yeah, I think, uh, Z or most people know him on Twitter by as Ansem has kind of said it best in which what you need for a meme coin to go viral is not only to be funny, have a great backstory, that sort of thing, but also a group of diamond handed individuals or large holders that are just never going to sell, never really dilute the market and to have that conviction to hold even through astronomical gains. And I think that's what makes a meme coin so great. Um, yeah. you have those highly convicted holders. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that kind of little bear market that we experienced after, that really tested that core group of community members on our side. Um, and I think it actually made our community a lot stronger where, you know, meme coins dip, right? It's the nature of the market. Um, but our, our holders, our core group of, of community members have so much conviction um, that it really makes our job as a team really easy from the standpoint that we just have to deliver for them, right? And then they're going to they're gonna do the rest. Makes total sense. Yeah, and I guess uh, 
the Kimbo team, you want to kind of round this one out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, just as everybody else said, community really is everything, um, especially for Kimbo. You know, if if I was to just walk away from Kimbo tomorrow, I know as much as I like to think that I'm irreplaceable, I know that somebody else would step up because we, we, we constantly just have so many people doing things at the same time. You know, whether it's Mad Labs creating the RNFT project that we're launching next week, uh, we got Ash, some super great devs who I've been having a pleasure to work with working on KimboNet. You know, uh, I think Fuji Testnet went live this week. Um, we also have Angelo from Machine Eleven, the same, the same three D studio who built um, Planet of the Apes, working on like a short film for Kimbo, which you guys have probably seen us post the past couple of days. Um, it's just such a good group of people. Everybody's like so supportive of each other. Everyone's working hard, um, and there's really nobody else that I'd rather go into the bowl with because, <laughs> mostly because you know our group of holders just has such strong conviction that just nobody will sell <laughs> no matter what so you you don't have to worry about getting dumped on you just know that your your community is just really with you to ride out this bull run that we're about to experience that i i believe we're about to experience um so it's just good to be a part of awesome yeah i guess um that transitions to the next question that i wanted to ask so culture coins or meme coins are kind of rooted towards community having fun that sort of thing how do you balance having a white paper marketing um having a website like what do you put on that website is it a bunch of jokes or you guys just constantly community building by being in kind of telegram or discord channels saying raid 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 slurp the dip etc or what's the balance like there um how do you make it not overly serious, but serious enough. I guess, um, giving this right back to the Kimbo team, you have a, a good answer for this one? Uh, yeah, so, you know, personally, I have probably about four or five different Kimbo chats going and, you know, various levels of just calling people out as to what what we like and what we don't like. So there's various levels of criticism. There's always a lot of thought that goes behind anything, whether it's what to put on our website or what <laughs> what type of moon <laughs> we should use in our uh, our latest post. I mean, Ruben, we're going back and forth. Should we use the full moon or should we use the waning gibbous? And I think we use the, the waning gibbous. Damn, well, you guys got favorite moon cycles over there. I don't know what, what's the moon on right now. Is it a waiting gibbous? Is it a full moon? I don't track that at all. <laughs> yeah, but it's also a bit shitty because, like in Telegram, there's not a moon that is not like the same moon as in Twitter. So you have to think about it twice as well. So, um, but to to uh, to add some extra info, what Ty is saying about um, being uh, serious or being funny in the communication to your community. I think um, everybody who is involved in a community, um, in a meme coin, like in a community coin, they are they are there for themselves, but they uh, they obviously want to also see the project growing uh, on a wider scale. Um, and I think that the, what Kimbo is doing is trying to find the, the right mix where people can chat and get have community uh, or communication with each other. Uh, on a positive way, that's like I, I really want to mention because the whole community, like in general, AVEX in general, super positive uh, and very helpful also to newbies on, on, the, on the ecosystem. I think what we are doing is that we are, are quite serious, like the core team is quite serious. We are building, uh, we want to build something out like uh, for the greater goods of ecosystem in total, but also for our community as well. And um, finding that balance is like really difficult because yeah we as as a team we are also part of the community and um uh, with my uh, communication and community building background i think we have the perfect mix uh on, on this we have like a very knowledgeable website with a lot of information about what we are doing and uh everything is like seriously uh but on the other side we also have like super cool engagement contest or just chit-chatting in Telegram or Discord, uh, talking about um, the fights with our wives uh, last night, you know. So 
Um, I think this mix is really important for building out the community and giving them the, the feeling that we are taking it serious and uh, that we want to achieve milestones in the near future. Gotcha. Um, are you guys building like a, a Kimbo net or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. What what I is saying? Like uh, yesterday, we uh, we launched, uh, or like it's two days already ago. Uh, we launched the testnet Kimbo net on uh, with together with the guys from Ash Team, um, and uh, we um, also released a hackathon where builders can build on uh, our uh, testnet. Um, so yeah, we we obviously want to um, do a lot of stuff with this subnet. Um, and getting more attention also from uh, that kind of uh, people who really likes and who are really into subnets as well. So again, it's good for the tech. Um, and I think in the long run, it's also very interesting for the community itself that they can um, be part of uh, something greater than just talking in, in telegrams or being part of uh, a Discord channel, but they can do stuff uh, in a project what they uh, what they're where they are invested in or where they are um, uh, combined with, um, with with other people. So um, I think that's that's really um, something special what you can give to your community. Um, and um, I, I, I suggest, like I, I know Coke is doing also, uh, of, like they are building also a subnet, but I suggest that like more communities needs to build subnets because um, it's super interesting for people to build on a subnet what is community based, because um, I think if you are like a developer and you want to build out a game, and you can get and you can build or like for example on Kimbonet, you have now seventeen thousand holders who are really want to try to play the game or getting involved with your project as well. Um, and if we like uh, like more communities are doing and building. Uh, we can give those developers and builders so much more than uh, than they want to build on something else. Um, and if you look at for the, for like on a on a wider 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 sc uh, screen, um, it's good for Apex uh, in total for the, for the whole ecosystem of Apex. So I suggest that we should build more and more. Wow, you guys really are in it for the tech. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess turning it over to the Gecko team, how do you balance this kind of fun, joking pool attitude with maybe having a white paper or light paper or something a little more structured? Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, all memes start out as uh, a fun thing, and you know we we're not so different from other projects in that matter. Where you know initially when we um when we was introduced to the AVAX community, we have a pretty wacky sort of like website where we put all of our like memes generated by AI and drawn by hand. Some of them on the website, sort of like a thing to to attract people in, have some fun, right? We organize a bunch a bunch of you know internal community events as well. Right, um, rates, competitions, memes, uh, you know, designs for stickers as well, which is actually is still running. Um, but then, you know, after a while, um, Avalabs introduced the you know cultural cramp, and we decided to you know take it up a notch and to be more serious with what we're trying to do. And so we sort of like step back on the fun part, and we hire or introduce more developers in our team more moderators into our team um, at a point where I guess right now the operation at Gecko is pretty boring, but like a, like a traditional company in a way where we have different teams of people and on Monday morning, they would uh, sort of have a meeting, hop on a quick call with different managers. And then after that, the managers with the core team members, they, we would hop on another call and to update us about different situations. It's a pretty boring task. But, and, and we all have our own sort of like um, objectives and key results that we have to do. You know, the dev team, they have their thing to do, uh, like the launch pad, um, you know, the staking, the aggregated swaps. Uh, we actually also, you know, thinking about building our own game hub. And the subnet is a pretty good idea too. Uh, and the dev team, we're deep diving on it because, again, we're trying to build our game. So it's necessary to have something like that. And also the NFT collection, you know. 
Um, and so, yeah, we, I, I guess at this point right now, Gecko is more heading towards the utility side and being more serious with our products. Uh, rather, but well, we still have fun from time to time on, 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 on Twitter. We always post memes and on Telegram, you know, uh, specific channels, right? Uh, they also have their fun in there with the moderators. Um, but yeah, yeah, we, uh, the way that we balance it is, you know, we just have different teams, build different things, focus on different aspects of, of the project, you know? So I, I guess we, we are synergizing pretty good in, in that matter. Yeah. It's kind of crazy seeing just the longer term transition transition from first starting as like a, a meme or culture project and then growing into something completely new as the value of the project goes up and aspirations continue yeah. to grow. Um, like, I think, Oh no, I'm sorry for cutting you up. Uh, go ahead. No, go on. Sorry. Uh, no. Yeah. I, I mean, it was funny you said that because initially when I joined this space, I was just joining the space to get the heck out of nine to five, right? I don't want to do that anymore. And then <laughs> joined the team of Geico Inu, and a month later, I, I'm now uh, was wide awake at 9 a.m. Uh, hopping on into a call, updating about the community, and then another call in the afternoon. So that <laughs> that was pretty stressful. But uh, again, everything is for the community, and uh, at least you know um, we're building something real, and uh, we're staying here for the long term. So you know it's worth, uh, I guess, the uh, trade off. I guess that makes sense. Um, I guess. Uh, transitioning this question to the COC team because I think you guys have balanced as well with having a lot of fun, whether it be COC treasure hunts in New York as well as a COC net, a COC bot, and kind of making like a product suite re revolving around COC. Um, do you mind kind of expanding on this question with how you guys have done it? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean... We are a community slash meme coin first and foremost. That, that's what we are, okay? We see everybody as part of the ecosystem. We don't own it. It's not ours, it's everybody's. We just run the socials. Um, the fair launch put us in the same point of entry as everybody else. Um, with that in mind, we don't believe in roadmaps. Um, generally speaking, roadmaps lead to over-promising under delivering, disappointment, regulatory concerns, and all manner of other things. That doesn't mean, however, that we're not working tirelessly in the background. You know, obviously we're working with Stephen and Johnny over at GoGo Pool towards a subnet. Um, the cocknet will obviously be something that we're going to encourage people to build upon. Um, but the reality is that we're fortunate to have a phenomenal community that just keeps building out the ecosystem. You know. So much of what we have has been built, you know, by our community members. There are things, obviously, you know, that said, you know, we don't run it. But Wojak and I, we sure do spend a lot of time in meetings. <laughs> we do spend an awful lot of time building partnerships, working with other um, teams, devs, communities, trying to find ways to build synergy, help develop the entire ecosystem uh, on, on top of Avalanche. And I think that's really important. So the answer is we don't have a white paper. We don't have a roadmap. Um, our technical abilities are coming through partnerships, through phenomenal community members. And I think that way we can try to avoid, you know, over-promising, like I said, and we really just want to see this thrive and for us to, you know, just get to enjoy it with everybody else. And, and that's, that's critical to us. Amazing. Yeah, I guess, neutral team, I think you guys might have a u unique perspective on this one, just kind of birthing from the arena. And then kind of now, I mean, I think what, you were the first like tipping coin within the arena as well. And so it, it kind of came from almost something with a little bit of a roadmap or, or tech behind it. And so maybe you could offer your experience here. So um, for us, when we started this meme, we had no idea that we would become a tipping currency in the, in the arena. That was that that was something that was a surprise to us. Actually, um, one day we wake up, we look at the notifications, and all of a sudden, arena has added us as a tipping currency. So that was, I mean, it was fantastic. But when we started the meme. Um, you know, we, we front loaded a lot of the work. We said, you know, we need this to be fun. We need this to remain fun. So we don't want to be working all the time. This is supposed to be something we enjoy. We should just be just, you know, what, like Ribley said, just, just the guys behind the socials and perhaps sitting in meetings trying to, 
trying to help grow the grow the pie a little bit, right? So so we front loaded a lot of stuff. We uh, looked at you know how do we launch the meme? Let's build out the website. Let's get everything ready and sorted. And we also had planned out phase two. We had a really good idea of what we wanted to pivot the meme to because we knew that the first uh, first phase of this meme was very limited in scope. It would only really apply to the people in the arena um, or people that had been in the arena. So, um, you know, we already had kind of plans in place for that. We, we knew that, um, you know, before we launched this project that we would want an NFT collection and we would want that to be built, you know, within the first couple weeks of, um, uh, first couple weeks of our launch so that we could have it ready and available for, for use later. Um, Things so so a lot of that was kind of taken care of before uh, before the arena added us as a tipping currency. Once they added us as a tipping currency, then uh, that kind of changed the game for us. We started thinking about okay, well, how do we make this more fun? How do we make it more interactive? You know, people are tipping each other within the arena. Um, what what can we do? And uh, one day, um, I just got behind my keyboard. Go, go, slow down, go. One day, I just got behind my keyboard, um, <laughs> and I started writing code. And I trained that cat how to do it. Uh, Ty, I think your uh, microphone's on. Go on. Uh, All right. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, well, one day, I was just, it was like 9 o'clock at night, and I sat down on my keyboard, and I was like, you know, this, this got to be something I can build over here. And then I just, I just stared at the screen for a little bit and I said, what if, and that, what if ended up becoming the hottest thing that, that one of the hottest things that came out, uh, of the no chill project, which was the exchange. Um, I spent like six hours that night building out uh, a little thing that would take tips using AVAX, uh, Go use that AVAX, purchase the uh, purchase the token on Trader Joe, and ship that token back to the user, so that the user would never have to leave the arena interface. And um, I mean, it was it was an instant hit. I mean, the the moment we launched, like it, it was a rough launch because I hadn't figured out everything when I put this thing together. So you know, there was a couple like missed transactions, but luckily I had you know the blockchain history to see like. You know who who tipped and didn't get their tokens. Um, so there's a little bit of a kind of an audit that I went through after the fact to make sure everybody got their tokens. But um, instant hit. It lit up the timeline. Everybody was talking about it in the arena. And then next thing you know, 24 hours later, uh, the 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 great folks at at Cock and You had uh, had cloned the the system. So it, it was it was amazing, and that that also led to kind of uh, an additional additional thing that actually got a lot more attention, which was, you know, we had this NFT collection. It had kind of stalled out at minting about like 10, 15% of the way through. So um, we, you know, I, I took that same code, made a couple changes to it, and it became a tip to, to mint an NFT bot. Um, you could mint our collection uh, by tipping it a certain amount of AVEX, and it would deliver it straight to your arena wallet. And if you had exported your private key for your arena wallet, you could go and uh, move that t uh, NFT around as you like. Or if you hadn't, you could just go see go see it on JoePegs or on Hyperspace because uh, we had the notifications flowing within the arena as well. So um, you know we, we, we had a we we had some code and, and some programming there that 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 we were able to build to uh, to make it a lot more fun for the users within the arena so they wouldn't have to leave the ecosystem to go and interact with these services. Um, and, you know, we front-loaded a lot of that early on, and then after tipping, we also kind of front-loaded these kind of changes. Since then, it's been a lot of what, what Gribbly was mentioning, right? A lot of memes, a lot of uh, kind of sitting in meetings, talking to people, trying to trying to find synergies with, with different projects. Um, so it's uh, now you know now now we just stay stay memeing. That that's what we do uh, every other day. You know, me, Chopper, Wonka, we fight each other, and that that keeps us motivated for for the next day. So it's it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun in the team channels. It's a lot of fun in the community channels, and you know, obviously within the arena as well. It's just a lot of 
it, it, it feels like it's bigger than us is I guess what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's the thing about culture coins in general. It feels so um, connected and unified to the community. It's very rare that a project builds within the space just because the space is so highly technical and get so exposed to their holders, their user base, that sort of thing and kind of joking around and having fun with them. And so it kind of brings out a new dynamic uh, within token holders and this sense of community. Um, I guess, XL, you have anything that you wanted to add to this one? And we're going to, I think, cut it off after this and open it up to the audience for questions. Yeah, just real quick, like, just even in my intro, I mean, all these guys up here, this is exactly the sentiment I was talking about. Like, everybody up here is a builder. Um, it's not just, we're going to launch a coin, and then that's it. Community's going to have fun with it. The community is going to have fun with it, but all of these guys up here, nobody's working for any pay or their bags or things like that. They're working tirelessly so they can have something to share with the community and grow the pie. And that's the same thing with Space and I. Um, we're Avalanche OGs. Like, I feel like we have a trustworthy name within the community that we've built. And people know that, yeah, we're going to have fun. We're going to, you know, do cock jokes and tech jokes and Kimbo jokes and whatever and meme. But they also know that hey, these guys are the real deal. They're going to show up and, and build something for us to enjoy. So, like, hats off to everybody else that's up here because, uh, you know, you guys are kind of paving the way for newer tokens and newer opportunities to come up in the future. So you guys are, are laying the groundwork, and we hope that we're part of that too. Yeah, and I want to I want to add, I totally agree with you, man. Thank you for saying that. And I want to uh, add that uh, I want to give a big shout out to AVEX, AVA Labs, and everybody who's involved on top of AVEX as well, because what you are doing and, 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 and combining uh, projects together in spaces, setting up like stakings with Trader Joe, what, what, you, what you recently launched, like um, it's for the greater goods of the whole ecosystem again. And um, I really appreciate that you are uh, trying to uh, find a way where you can combine also the communities together and get involved in the communities, uh, so that so that is for um, for everybody's uh, best interest. So um, really appreciate it. Amazing, amazing! Wow, S so many so many new things to learn. Great conversation, and it's cool just to see the synergy of how each team has a different perspective on approaching building these communities, but there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of similarities around what builders care about and uh, and how they've welcomed folks into the community, but also um, really trying to, to do something to grow the avalanche pie, which is, which is really awesome. Um, so what we're gonna do now is, uh, we're actually kind of over time, but we'd love to stay on for a few minutes. Um, we're going to probably uh, pull up a few folks to ask questions. Uh, we want to keep the conversation towards questions for the people that are up here or kind of in general around some of the insight that they've shared and in response to some of their ideas around community building and uh, developing the next phase of, of these community coins. Uh, I know there's plenty, plenty of other uh coins and tokens out there that people would love to come up and show, but we want to keep the space here focused uh, and, and honor the time of our guests here. So we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, cut it off if, if it gets too shilly. Um, and so we're going to call some folks up, but I'm going to try to call some people up that have been requesting up since uh, the beginning. Um, so yeah, let's um, call a few people up. And while we're doing that, um, I'm going to uh, just remind everybody about a few things. So, so today's announcement, the Avalanche Foundation launched Meme Coin Rush, which is a liquidity mining incentive program, starting off with rewards that are allocated to Stay Cut and Trader Joe for um, different ways that uh, users can provide liquidity um, for these tokens so that, uh, you know, increases uh, how liquid they are and... The you know lowering the slippage and making the trading easier and a lot of that stuff. So all and as well as the the culture catalyst fund, which has allocated funds towards supporting this as well, all done by the foundation too. So there's also uh, a little bit of clarity there that Avalabs didn't have anything to do with any of those decisions made on any of those tokens or allocation of funds. It's all done by the foundation. So wanted to make sure that everybody knew kind of the distinction there. So let's get into it. We're gonna uh, I'll call uh, a couple people up. Um, 
while the first person is asking questions. So Vibes, you are up first. Hello, thank you very much indeed for having me up. Um, such wonderful projects on the stage. I really admire everything that you've been doing. I have a question for you. What have you found um, compared to other chains, the advantage of being on AVAX? Yeah, I guess I'll turn this over to the participants within this space because you guys yeah. can answer it best. Yeah, sure. we'll do. We'll also just have like uh, one or two people kind of jump in for some of these answers. I know everybody probably has a great answer to that, but in order to keep moving, we'll see um, if we can get like one or two people to chime in. Yeah, so, I, yeah. I think uh, from our perspective, like the difference in the chain is just the the culture within the community. Like I was just saying, like everyone here is kind of builders. It's a little bit more mature. Like I like to characterize it as like conservative degens right like everybody wants to make sure things are on the up and up but if you show up every day and you put the time in people are going to rally behind that here because they see value in that um which makes sense and i think just the second prong to that is yeah ava labs um they cover so many different verticals like i think someone earlier said you're not going to get that kind of treatment on an ethereum or a solana or another chain nothing wrong with their approach to doing that but Ava Labs very structured. They run many different verticals and they do it well. The people there, you know, really care about their job. And I think, you know, when you have a conversation with someone from Ava Labs, like it really makes you want to step your game up. And that just kind of trickles down to all of the end users and our friends that are on the chain. Thank you very much. That's a really good answer. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh... All right, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to jump in right now. Uh, this is Jaden from Gecko. Thank you so much for the questions, Fives. Um, yeah, I just want to jump in real quick here that I think, you know, the reason why we built on uh, Avalanche and why we love Avalanche so much is there's no place like Avalanche. I mean, if you look at it, Avalanche is probably the earliest chain that show, like, public support for meme coins, and they officially recognize that meme coins are part of the chain, and it's a culture that, you know, we can never miss, and it's important to community. So uh, that's one. And uh, the second thing is, in terms of the potential for AVAX, I think Avalanche has a massive potential, and you know we just we're still sleeping right now, and we haven't even exploded yet, even though we two X from thirty couple months ago. Uh, so the reason why I said that is, you know, again, I'm very new in this space. And my advice when I got to this space from some of the more experienced or veteran investors, they said like, hey, do not invest in like old coins, layer ones, 2017, 2020, you know, they outdated invest in the newer ones. But, you know, if you look at uh, ever since, I'm not going to say which layer ones, but in 2023, we got a few layer ones that were launched and it seems like they are not attracting the attention that they want to attract. And the chains, they are not that developed. They're not established. You know, they're not like Avalanche and other OG layer ones. They are, the ecosystem is not established. They don't have as much DApps. They don't have the loyalty that, that we have here in AVAX, right? Because all of the supporters of AVAX were OG. We are survivors for, for the past bear run. So uh, we know exactly what makes a chain great, right? So the support and the loyalty is just out of this world. Um, and yeah, again, like we're seeing it right now in play, you know, AVAX Solana, we probably want to say two OG chains that uh, we never thought it going to perform well compared to the newer ones. But here we are, you know, we, we're on top of the world and I think we can even move further from that. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks guys for coming out. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, definitely good to, to hear the different perspectives of, of what they built. Um, we're going to go back over to the creator. You're up next. Unknown, the creator. Come off mute. I think you're up next. All right. We're going to go to the next person then while we wait for that to work. Eric, what's going on, man? How are you? Guys, thank you so much for bringing me up. Such a fascinating conversation. I, I really love this. You know, I, like I'm, you mentioned different verticals within Avalanche. I'm in the DeFi vertical, but like when we launched back in September, it's like we had a sub, like we, we have a DEX basically multi asset thing. And we, on Fuji Testnet, we had like SP 500, like kind of serious thing, right? We have 500 tokens in a single pool. And like we wanted to launch something like that on mainnet, but like honestly, there's just not that many blue chip tokens for us to launch. So we launched with ten tokens. We could have done five hundred, but we launched ten. So like, uh, like how this ties into with you guys when Arena came out, I was like, 
holy shit, these tickets are so cool. Like now we have like thousands, tens of thousands of tickets. Like we could put all of these into a single pool and create like massive markets on these things and create indexes for different communities. And like, oh, if you're an artist, you can buy the artist's coin and, you know, which has all the top artists in there. And I, I, I started looking into how we can do that. And then, you know, you know what happened to Arena 1.0. So we, we didn't uh, follow through with that. But like the challenge for me is just finding tokens to 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 put into our protocol so now with all the excitement about meme coins and and, and all these teams like I, I i'm in very regular communication with with uh matt and, and the, the DeFi team so he just kind of introduced me to to all of the teams on this call and i'm very excited to think about how we can work together because now we have a source of good tokens it's not like the serious blue chip but it's more like community stuff so like you know one thing i'm excited about is like creating like community pools for example so like we can have hundreds or thousands of, of tokens in a in a community pool so i'd like, love to talk to you guys about how how we can do that you know and like why a pool versus like a two token pool like to other kind of dexes you know you have two tokens so you have to provide liquidity on one side and then your token on the other side but that fragments thing. So like if you've, these five teams came together and created like a five token pool, all that liquidity gets shared. So now, you know, trading becomes better. So like, I, I'm very interested to explore, you know, synergies with, with all of you about how we can improve, you know, the other vertical, like these things are kind of overlapping. Like how do you create better markets for, for these kind of community stuff? So I just wanted to come in and say like, you know, awesome hearing from you guys. Like, I want to learn more. You know, like Excel Baller. Like, I, I follow you on Twitter. It's great to hear your voice. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, looking forward to finding ways to kind of move things together. Just not only from community perspective, but also how do you get the financial services working? So, community plus financial services, just like a win-win. I, I I kind of think so. No real question there. Just saying hi and uh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming up. Um, for those of you uh, that are interested in some of the stuff that Eric's talking about or some of the research and stuff he's done and what he's building with Cavalry, uh, you see his name up here and shoot him a DM and connect. I'd love to, to love to see the projects work across these verticals and see what can be built. So thanks, Eric, for coming up. Um, all right, we're going to add uh, Secret Smoothies up first, but just want to see if the creator is uh, is there if you're, if you're coming off audio or uh, mute. Man, it doesn't seem like the creator wants to create. All good. All good. We'll go to the next one. All right. Uh, Secrets, I think you're up. Can you hear me now? Yeah, man. <laughs> What's up? you have a question? Yeah, me now. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Amazing. Uh, cool. We're going to go to the next one. Uh, all right, Capricorn, add you up here. Sorry, there's a lot of people that are dropping up and down this like request list, so I'm trying to get to the ones that I feel like were up early. Capricorn, what's going on? Oh, hey, good evening. I appreciate you bringing me up. Um, super excited for this whole entire endeavor. You know, really appreciate you having the space, bringing all these different projects onto one stage. And we kind of get the vibe, you know, that they're all going to work together versus against each other. I mean, we're just going to try and raise this whole entire community up. So, you know, really appreciate you doing that. I had a question, or not really a question, but just kind of want to raise a concern. Like, as far as the DeFi rewards programs that are going to be going on with the meme coins, it seems like, you know, it, I'm a newbie retail investor i mean i've been here two and a half years but i'm just now getting to the point where i'm trying to secure my assets so it seems like like the DeFi rewards they encourage you to put all of your assets into one wallet and i know you're coming to the end of the space so i don't expect you to get into it right now but i think it'd be really cool to have a space on like wallet security on good practices like what you should do as far as how you want to pursue this endeavor i see gribbly's guy's hands up i know he's a an expert on this yeah i mean, I, don't, I think gribbly actually 
popped his hand up too. Maybe he's got a good good thing you want to chime in on there too. Yep, I'll let Gribbly go first, then I can follow it up. Yeah, I mean, uh, great question, Cap. I mean, I obviously uh, after the announcement, the first thing I saw was lots of people saying that. I mean, these community coins have allowed a lot of people to gain more wealth than they've typically had in their wallets. And obviously they have some concerns over security, rightly so. Uh, so I, I did have a quick chat, certainly with the, the Trader Joe guys earlier. These are audited contracts that they have been using for, you know, other things in, in their ecosystem. And as a result, I would hope that there's, you know, security there. Now, when you start talking about wallet security, we often speak about it on the various spaces that we take part in, but it's definitely something that I'd be happy to get engaged with, Matt, if, if that's something that you wanted to do as, you know, Ava Labs to, to build a, um, you know, some kind of you know, round table to discuss just good security practices. And that's not just wallet security, that's operational security, that's keeping your identity safe, that's making sure that you've got everything in play, because it's not just a wallet that is a risk. So I'd be more than happy to jump in and take part in that. I mean, I think most people know that I, I, I am a cybersecurity professional, that doesn't mean I'm flawless by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm more than happy to, to get engaged in those kinds of discussions and, and work those through. Yeah, I think regarding just like DeFi best practices, et cetera, there's a lot of good YouTube videos, content, et cetera. But for the most part, I always recommend using a hardware wallet, um, diversifying risk away, that sort of thing, um, making sure you don't have all of your funds in a singular protocol. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice just cracked. Um, and just really ensuring um, diversification. I'd say that's almost everything in life. Uh, but especially true when you're using different blockchains. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I, I would say that, you know, if you find that all of the steps that are a bit too vigorous to take, because, again, you are a bit new in DeFi, I would recommend you to just buy Gecko and just hold and stake, and I guess that's the safest way to do it. Yep, just my two cents yeah. on that. Uh, okay, I, just, cool. I, just, I just wanted to say real quick, I think, Matt, the reason why your voice cracked is because you were trying to say not to put all your assets into one wallet and diversify at the same time which is kind of like the opposite of what is going on with the rewards program. That's why I chimed in and brought it up. It makes me a little sketch to put everything into one wallet. And if I'm going to do it, I want to do it the best way possible. So that's the only reason I brought it up. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's about just having a singular wallet, you could always have multiple wallets, multiple hardware wallets, that sort of thing. <laughs> one for each DeFi protocol, one for each asset. I've heard of people with... 10 different hardware wallets, for instance. And so it's really up to the, like, one right. zone um, peace think of mind. As far as the, the Trader Joe protocol rewards, it requires you to have everything in the one wallet. Is that not correct? Or did I, did I totally misread that? Uh, there's going to be multiple protocols involved and hopefully multiple phases as well for Meme Coin Rush. And so it, it should allow you to diversify away some of your risk. I, right. I think I can answer that question too. I think you're asking about if you want to stake in, let's say, the Geico advice pool on Trader Joe, right? Which you should be. Uh, if you want to stake in that pool, should you be using one wallet and put all the asset in that one wallet? Or can you have like two or three wallets, right? Is that, so is that the correct? Well, specifically what I was referring to is the single-sided staking on Trader Joe. In order oh, okay. to maximize, yeah, in order to maximize rewards, you need to have all of the tokens that are on the reward list in one single wallet, unless I was totally misreading it. Um, actually, no, yeah, yeah, I'm not it. sure. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if that's actually a good. Thing. I don't know if you if you know the exact answer to that, but I, I definitely want to leave it up because they haven't even launched it yet. So I want to leave it up to them to answer that for sure. But Gribbly, you might know. Yeah, I mean the, the answer is you're actually going to be putting into their contract. So it won't actually all be in your wallet. You could do it in multiple steps, so you wouldn't have to put it in the one place. But that that is going to be tied to that one wallet address. It is a it's a good genuine concern, Cap, and, and I would say to be cautious 
always, um, always think, always take your time. You know, whenever you think you need to rush on something in crypto, it's a good idea to take a step back, have a think about it. And we can certainly have a, you know, chat about this maybe on the podcast later or, you know, whatever. But, you know, I think the, you're absolutely right. In order to benefit from the, the multipliers that they've described, you would need to be staking from the same wallet. Now, obviously you're putting the tokens into their contract, which is also a trust element there as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a perfectly valid question. And, you know, I, I, as I said, I spoke to the guys at TJ earlier, pretty confident in their ability to make sure that their side's secure. Obviously everything's always, there's always a risk. It's, you know, but pretty confident there. And yeah, I would just, um, be cautious. I'm, don't don't throw your entire worth in there, and maybe transfer to a fresh wallet to stake from, so that you're not doing it from your, you know, your cold or um, hardware wallet. Maybe use a hot wallet or something, something unique and different for it. That's good advice. That. I actually, yeah, thanks, Cap. I really appreciate that too. And I think this is probably a good separate conversation that we should spin up a spaces on and. Uh, since there's so many maybe new folks coming into either the Avalanche ecosystem or to crypto in general, uh, there's probably a lot of things that some of the people that have been around for a long time can share around some of these tips and ways to um, kind of navigate these things because it can be complicated. To, and uh, and also we'll, we'll make sure we're trying to do a better job of really trying to explain how each of the things work. Um, and I know Trader is going to be releasing more info on there single-sided staking for these coins that I believe might be launching next week. So probably more info to come there. Uh, we're going to also have to uh, wrap it up here because we have to be off in the, in the next three minutes to hop to something else. But um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody for coming in here. I know we could be talking about this stuff for hours and hours and hours, and there's so many actually other really awesome spaces that are happening even outside our kind of official account. We just wanted to do uh, something here where we could try to introduce each of these projects to a wider swath of people through our reach. But I think there's lots of other kind of more targeted community focused conversations. I know our community of AVAX channels can be spinning up a bunch. So I wanted to um, give all of our guests the opportunity for a quick like 30 second, you know, final thoughts where people can find you channels they said hop in to, to join your community those kinds of things and we will we will we'll be hosting more space and there's a lot of questions on uh, people that wanted to come up for questions um and apologies we couldn't get to everyone uh but yeah there was a lot of great stuff today so for those of uh for the special guests that have been here wanted to give each an opportunity to do a quick uh final thoughts uh chopper why don't we start with you Hey, thanks. Thanks for having us on. Uh, you know, the No-Chill team really appreciates it. Um, our official handle is actually up in this space. It's No-Chill AVAX. Um, feel free to hop in our Telegram channel if you want to, you know, say hi or, or have any questions for us. We'd be happy to answer. Awesome. All right. Uh, Piff, you want to go? Yeah. Uh, the ticker is No-Chill. As Chopper said, you can uh, find the find the username and follow us and get all access to our socials. And uh, if I had to leave with one parting message, it's buy, bro, buy, buy the freaking token. Um, awesome! Thanks for coming on and appreciate you uh, sharing some info, Gecko. Uh, yes, sir. Wanna, yes, sir. Again, okay, thank you so much, guys, for uh, for organizing this space. It's such crazy that we see the unite uh, of the people in here. And again, uh, we are at. Uh, Gecko in your AVAX as our handle. Again, follow us on our socials if you want. You can hop in our Telegram. The water's warm. You know, we're not going to bite. We're only Gek. And uh, yeah, our token ticker is Gecko. So check us out, man. Big things are coming. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you coming through and introducing your project to, to more folks. Um, we're going to go to Kimbo, Ruben. I think uh, Ty had to drop off, but Ruben, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody uh, as well. Um, the ticker is Kimbo. And I want to give advice for everybody that Monday uh, we do our mint for the Kimbrose NFT. So make sure that you are buying the Kimbrose NFT. It's good for the token and you have a great PFP. So uh, thank you all again. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for coming through. And uh, yeah, we're going to go to, to uh, Excel if you want to. 
give us your final thoughts. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is XL. Um, this is number go up tech. Our ticker is tech. Uh, our DMs are open if you want to talk or have any questions. Telegram is open. Uh, we're available right now on Trader Joe and Enclave Markets. And uh, one last thing I want to say for the gang is meow. Yeah, get, get that in there. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate that too. We're going to wrap things up with Gribbly. Final words. Thank you. And I, I just want to say thanks to everybody, you know, to to yourselves at Able Apps for organizing this, to the other panel members, to all of you fantastic people down in the audience listening to us and, and taking part and, and helping us to, to build something phenomenal on Avalanche. Um, you know, with regards to us, you can find us at Cock in You AVAX. Please, I just want to say this, everyone be careful. There are so many scams out there right now. When you see a post, double check that it is who you think it is. Make sure you're following each of these tokens so that you can validate that those those posts that induce FOMO are actually from us. You know, generally we're not going to try to induce FOMO in that way. But please just double check everything. But you can find us cock in your AVAX, uh, cock.xyz is our website, has the rest of our socials, details of our ecosystem, all the fantastic people building. But you know, first and foremost, thanks to everybody. Appreciate you all. Yeah, thank you. And I'm glad we wrapped up with that message because I think it's an important message for everybody as the euphoria and the hype takes over. There's always ways to, to keep yourself safe and to to verify as much as you can. Um, so appreciate everybody coming through. Matt, as always, thanks for, for leading the way here. We're going to be doing more of this. We're going to get the community together on different spaces. Um, and this is just the beginning. So uh, yeah, hope everybody's having a good week. Uh, I'll tell you right now that I'm here at GDC and AVAX is the talk of the town. Gaming on AVAX took over this whole thing. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of the content on, on social, but yeah. Good times ahead, and we appreciate all of our guests for coming through. And, uh, yeah, go join one of these communities, get to know some of these great folks, and we'll all keep building together. So we're going to wrap it up there. See you all next time.